Good morning all. Today we are going to discuss the next topic in parallel programming which is parallel algorithms and patterns. Parallel algorithms and patterns. In this parallel algorithms and pattern uh, we'll be covering algorithm analysis for parallel computing applications. What are the uh, what is the difference between a performance model versus algorithm complexity? What is a parallel algorithm prefix sum and a parallel global sum? These two are the algorithms which we'll be seeing. Now, coming to this particular term, parallel algorithms and patterns, what do you mean by an algorithm actually? Algorithm is nothing but a step-by-step -step procedure. So, you write some steps and using that steps, you solve a problem, right? And if this solution to a problem can be done on a single CPU or it can be on a GPU. Now, if I'm writing an algorithm for a CPU, I call it as a serial algorithm or you can even call it as a sequential algorithm. Whereas when I write the same solution to a problem on a GPU, we call that as a parallel algorithm. Why? Because on a GPU, there are multiple cores which are executing your problem or which are providing a solution to your problem. So now parallel algorithm is nothing but a step-by-step -step procedure, but you will be writing it for multiple cores. And what do you mean by the term pattern here? Pattern is nothing but some procedure you apply. For example, uh, let me take an example of a merge sort. So what do you do actually in a merge sort? You sort the elements. So the steps that are required for uh, performing this merge sort is nothing but an algorithm. And this merge sort will go for using a pattern or you call it as a blueprint, which is nothing but divide and conquer. So what you actually do in merge sort, the given input values will be divided into parts and each of these parts, you'll go for sorting them in order and then go for merge. So this is nothing but divide and conquer is a pattern which you are using for merge sort algorithm. So pattern can be even called as a blueprint. Now coming to algorithm analysis for parallel computing applications. Why do you want to actually analyze an algorithm? For any problem, if you are providing a solution, you may not have a single algorithm. You can have algorithm 1, algorithm 2 or algorithm 3 for the same problem. So how do you decide which particular algorithm is the best algorithm? So that, is, that will be done by means of analysis. And when I go for algorithm analysis here, uh, which algorithm you will be choosing based on our time or based on the space because these are the two requirements for a computer application. So either the time should be less or the memory requirement should be less. So once you decide the time and the space of an algorithm out of these three algorithms I have selected algorithm two because of less time and the less memory occupied. But how do you represent them? Those are represented by means of asymptotic notations. So those asympt this has been already covered in your uh, analysis. Uh, it will be in your uh, design and analysis of algorithm. Here I'll be just giving an overview of it. So these are your asymptotic notations. So when you go for big O notation, big O represents the upper bound or you call it as worst case time complexity for an algorithm. And theta notation you will be calling it as an average case of a average case behavior of an algorithm or you call it as tight bound. Whereas when you go for omega notation, this is your lower bound or you call it as best case time complexity. So depending on the time and space complexity of each of the algorithms, you select an algorithm which has a best case time complexity. Moving on to the next topic here, it is performance model versus algorithm complexity. As we have seen in the previous case, complexity can be in terms of either time or a space. Whereas when you see this performance model, in, in place of performance model, we'll be dealing with the hardware structure, right? So what is the difference between this performance model and the algorithm complexity? We'll take an example. For example, you want to add all the elements in an array. So in case of algorithm complexity, you either calculate the time or space complexity. So O of N, O of 1. So these are the complexities. Coming to your performance model for the same example, 
we try to understand what are the hardware differences when you are executing the algorithm on two different machines what might be the compiler optimizations how you can achieve parallelization for the same algorithm or the same problem what is the amount of memory optimization you do so all these factors are to be considered when you are developing a model so this we call it as performance model considerations coming to the next one parallel algorithms as i already tell, told you if you are executing the program on a single machine you call that as a serial or a sequential algorithm and if you are executing the same problem on a multiple processor so here i have processor 1 processor 2 and processor 3 you go for designing an algorithm that is your parallel algorithm as i told you in the previous case about your merge sort take the same example this is the input that has been provided to you here you are dividing it into two partitions so this is partition one and this is partition two this can be given to some particular processor one this can be executed on processor two and ultimately you need to combine them as a single output so this would be your output and the pattern here followed is nothing but divide and conquer Now, the next problem we'll be seeing in this example here is nothing but prefix sum. So, when you go for prefix sum here, you'll be given the list of elements. These are your input values. Prefix sum, as it implies prefix, you'll be getting a value at a particular cell depending upon the previous values. So, prefix sum is of two times. It is exclusive prefix sum or inclusive prefix sum. And this prefix sum is also known as scan. That is the reason we have written exclusive scan and inclusive scan. In place of scan, you can even use the term prefix. Now, when you are using exclusive scan, this is your input elements. Now, this is my output. So, exclusive, you will not consider the first element. So, first value will be 0. And you start storing the so sec, first value will dump into your second cell. And when you are going for the third value here, third value of an array, it is summation of these two values. So, 3 plus 4 would be 7. That is the reason we call it as prefix sum. And when I go for 13, 13 here, how you are getting 13 when you are adding these three values? 3, 4, 6 would be 13. And 16 is 13 plus 3, 16. Till here you sum up. And this value will be summation of till here, 16 plus 8. And here it is 24 plus 7, the next value. 24 plus 5. So, 24 here you are getting till 31 right so 31 plus 5 would be 36 so each of the cells so first cell you will be making zero and you start storing the values from the second this you move into the second summation of these two into third fourth element would be the summation of first three values fifth would be the summation of first four values so that is exclusive scan coming to your inclusive scan or a inclusive prefix you start taking the first element as it is. So, 3 as it is, you take it as 3. 3 would be 3. And your second element would be summation of these two. 3 plus 4 would be 7. And 13, if I go for, it is summation of including your third element. 3 plus 4 plus 6. And here 16 would be 3 plus 4 plus 6 plus 3. So, here I am including my first element. Here I am not including my first element. So, that you call it as exclusive scan. Now, if you want to practically implement this prefix sum, we'll first go for inclusive scan. So, or inclusive prefix sum. The algorithm which we will be using parallelly is nothing but your step efficient algorithm, the name given to this. Try to concentrate on this properly. This is the input that has been provided to you. So, based on this input, you try to do the summation. So, when you go for doing the summation here, the next iteration would be sum of. So, wherever you have a two lines connecting, two arrows connecting, it, it means it is a summation. So, this is nothing but your summation of values. So, the adjacent values are summed up and here I am not taking my first value. So, it means that the first value will be copied as it is, whereas the second value will be the summation of the first two values. So, you repeat it and when you are coming to the next step here, you just to copy the first two values as it is from your previous array. So, this indicates that here it, you are going for 
powers of 0, 2 power 0 means 1. So you will be only copying one element. Here it is 2 power 1 means 2. So you copy two elements from the previous array and here 2 power 2 would be 4. So here you copy four elements as it is from the previous array. Now after you copy two uh, values or four values, what is the next values you are doing? You take the previous value as it is and start adding from the starting location. So this value will be as it is and the next value would be you take the elements from the starting locations and try to put up the values. So if you just take this example here, first iteration 3 is as it is. You are taking 3 and 1 summation 4. Next you are taking 1 and 7 summation 8, 7 and 0 summation 7. And in the second case, you are just taking value 3. You are taking 4 because it is 2 power 1 means 2 values are copied as it is. And from the third, you take 8, start with 3, 7 with 4, 4 with 8, 5 with 7, 7 with 4, 9 with 9 with 5. Like that, you go on adding it up. Now at last, you will be ending up these values. So whatever values you are getting at as output, this would be the final iteration. Now, when you have having seen the prefix sum, now we'll go for a exclusive prefix sum. So in exclusive prefix sum, the algorithm will be calling here as work efficient parallel scan algorithm. And it has two sweeps. One you call it as up sweep or a right sweep. The other you call it as a down sweep or a left sweep. Now coming to the up sweep or a right sweep, this is the input value which are which is being provided to you. And you start adding your this two arrows indication indicates that this is a plus operation what you are performing. So these two values you add it up and store and here the remaining values whatever you are not adding it up you just copy it from the previous elements. So what these locations whatever locations you are not summing up here. So that values you have to take it from the previous array as it is. So after you add it up when you move it up this is nothing but your up sweep. So next you go for your second element and the fourth element summation into four and the sixth element and eighth element you store it in eight. Two and four you add and store it in four. Six and eight you add and store it in eight. As you move up here, what is left out here? Four and eight and you store the result in eight. So remaining all other locations since you are not doing sum up, only the previous values will be getting copied as it is. Previous values will be getting copied as it is. Only the eighth element will be changed. So here adjacent elements are changed. Here fourth element, eighth element is changed and here eighth element is changed. And after you get this output, this output will be used as input for your down sweep. So the same output I'm using it as input for your down sweep. This is my input now. And after you store your output of your up sweep as input to your down sweep, replace your last element with zero. So once you replace your last element with zero, what was the uh, uh, calculations you were doing? You were first performing adjacent summation. Then you were going for two and four, two, four values, six, eight values. Then you were going for 4 and 8 values. This was done in your up sweep. Now we'll go for doing it in reverse. When you go for down sweep, 4 and 8 I'll take. So 4th element and 8th element you sum up. 4th element, 8th element. So this is 4 and 8 and the result will be stored in 8. So 4 and 0 you store the result in 8. And again one more thing you have to do is. I'm using a pink line here indicating that this zero is getting transferred to this particular location. So whatever you have in your eighth location is getting transferred to your fourth location. So I'm done with four eight. Now what you have to do two four and six eight. So two four plus and whatever you have in four you're just transferring. There are no two arrows. This is a single arrow meaning that zero is just swapped. Wherever you have a conjunction of two arrows, it indicates that it is a summation. You swap up. So 2, 4 result in 4, 6, 8 result in 8. Then coming to the next one, these are your adjacent elements. So you just go for summing up your adjacent elements. And when you are summing up your adjacent elements, take this next value and swap. Next value and swap. So finally, you get the output of your 
exclusive scan. Now we have another problem here which is no, nothing but parallel global sum. So when you go for parallel global sum, you will be given a list of elements. And if you want to do it on a multiple processor, so I have a processor 1, processor 2, processor 3 and processor 4. You sum up all the values parallelly, 2-2 two, two values parallelly on the processors. And then once you get the 4 results, again here I am using 4 processors. Next time I am using only two processors taking the result from the upward motion and finally store the result in a single processor. So in parallel global sum we will be using multiple processor for performing the addition. But when you are doing this the problem here you will be getting in parallel global sum is about your precision. So precision is nothing but when you go for performing your floating point operations. Sometimes in some scientific calculation it is very much important that even a minute fraction value is also important. So here I assume I am getting 6 digits as my precision. But I want 12 digits as my precision right. So even a single value or a single uh, digit here plays a very important role in some scientific calculation. So that particular uh, problem that is a problem when you go for parallel global sum because you are distributing your work on multiple processors. So the order of execution first element may not be added with the second element first element may be added with third element fourth element. So even if you are changing the order of additions sometimes the precision precision is lost but you want the precision to be accurate at any cost. So to overcome this problem in parallel global sum we go for long double data type pairwise kahan nut and quad uh, quad precision long double data type as you all know if you want more amount of digits in your precision you just declare your result as your uh, long double as well as the input also type cast your input into long double and perform the thing uh, summation but depending upon your architecture the number of bits in your precision will be changed so if it is x86 you may get 12 digits as precision right so this is not reliable. You can even go for pairwise summation where the adjacent elements will be summed up and whatever elements are given to you, you go for add, pair it up into two to add them and try to store the result in a single one. If you have odd number of elements for pairwise summation, you leave your left to most element. And not summation is same as your pairwise summation. And coming to your quad precision here, if you want more number of digits, even more number of digits here, we go for using IEEE formats where even you can get 128 digits as your precision. And the next one here is Kahan summation. So what we do in Kahan summation is we initialize a compensation term additional to your sum and we go on adding an element to the sum. And we calculate the difference between the current updated sum and the original sum that will be stored in your compensation. And at last whatever result you are getting in your comp uh, compensation will be summed up with your compensation term. 